we're going to give Aubrey a chance to respond. Uh, so you have five minutes now. Oh, I don't need that yet. You're on. Right, thank you. Um, so one of, the, one of the things that make this debate so much more enjoyable and um, actually tractable than my debate with Colin Blakemore is that we have slides, which means that I can actually go back through Richard's slides and address in detail some of the things that he said. A detailed five minutes, Aubrey. That's right. Let's see what we've got. And you can stay off my childhood. Let me just start with the things that... Yeah, this'll do, this'll do. Um, uh, so, first of all, this is just a misstatement of the um, assumptions of longevity escape velocity. If you actually improve the uh, therapies, the comprehensiveness of therapies that repair the damage of aging faster than longevity escape velocity, which is the threshold level at which you keep one step ahead of the problem, then you buy time. And you can afford to go through a period, a bad century where you don't make any more progress and you're still doing all right. So actually everything that Richard says here is just as a result of not really paying attention to quite what longevity escape velocity actually is. Um, of course, this here, when we talk about um, uh, powered flight, is a fine example if you restrict yourself to commercial flight, in which the commercial pressure to improve things just wasn't good enough. But if we look at the speed of fighter jets and so on, then these numbers don't look the same at all. Um, however, let's get on to the more serious allegations that were made, um, because they were quite serious. Uh, here we go. We um, did say when we had disagreed, we'd really disagree. <laughs> right. right. So um, I did indeed write this statement at the top. I uh, said that, that gerontologists, a large number of senior researchers, had been engaging in a serious distortion of facts. Now, strictly speaking, I didn't say that they didn't believe what they were saying, which was what Richard um, uh, accused me of saying. I think that in, in many cases, they genuinely did believe what they were saying. But I think that this was still appropriate language, because I think that their belief was culpable. Their belief was so unreasonable that it could not be justified. We did not need the discovery of mutants in the various pathways that we heard about earlier that extend lifespan in order to see that aging, that the age, that diseases and disabilities of old age are consequences of aging in the way that I, I said. What else are they? What is the alternative hypothesis? Is it that there are diseases out there that don't affect young adults but do affect old adults? Is that magic? What is it? There is no other hypothesis out there, and there was no other hypothesis out there. And for any gerontologist in the 50s or the 40s or the 1840s to ignore that was culpable. That's what I'm saying. Now, let's move on. I've done that part. What's that bit about teeth? Is that the bit about teeth? Um, teeth's the one back, Aubrey, I think. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, right. So, yes, it's indeed true that there are certain changes in the body that happen with age that are not causative of diseases and disabilities late in life. For example, learning stuff, becoming more knowledgeable is another example. That's why many gerontologists prefer to use the word senescence to describe the bad subset of the changes that happen during life. And that's fair enough. But the fact is, all of you out there know perfectly well that when Richard and I are using the word aging, we're talking about the bad stuff. So this is just a straw man. This has nothing to do with a disagreement between us, really. Now, I absolutely need to get on to the um, accusation that I distorted facts myself, which I think is... Um, I think you've gone way past my slides. We, we could go into lens if you want. That was, no. Okay. Now show me it. Where is it? Oh, come here. We'll be here all night. Look. Look, there it is. Look, you concentrate on the vitriol. I'll right. do the slides. So, all right. so, hang, so, on, so hang, well, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're not there yet. Yeah. The, um, I've forgotten. Which point were you going to slag me off? The bit, about me, the bit about me being described as a Cambridge Don. Richard. Mm -hmm. There no, we are. No, there I want to see the actual word up here. All right, so here we are. Um, so, as you see, the actual quote from me is with regards to my institutional affiliation, not what post I had in that affiliation. I never claim at any point to be a professor at Cambridge. 
I was mistakenly called a professor at Cambridge, I think, once in the media over the entire period. I had an institutional affiliation at Cambridge, and the only distortion that I allowed to occur in the media was the idea that the work which I was doing in gerontology was work that I was paid for to do at the University of Cambridge, whereas, in fact, I did it in my spare time while doing something else. I wasn't actually a technician. I was a research associate, but I was working on a bioinformatics project. This is, therefore, a complete distortion by Richard of the so-called distortion that I made. Um, <laughs> finally, get the slides back. Here we go. Um, finally, I just want to talk about the MIT Technology Review thing, which is uh, here we go. Now it says here at the top: the sense challenge goal. The purpose of the challenge is to establish whether sense is worthy of serious consideration. Submissions are sought to demonstrate, uh, attempt to demonstrate it is not. Now, the reason why the challenge was about whether it was worthy of serious consideration, as opposed to whether it was correct or whether it was the most promising approach to combating aging, was because of articles that had appeared, indeed, including an editorial in Technology Review, but also including a, a rather vituperative article orchestrated by Rich Miller in Embo Reports, that had asserted the exact opposite, had asserted that that sense was completely unscientific. So that's why the thing was done that way. And as you can see here, as Richard himself chooses to quote, the judge's summary is, yes, sure, there are many unsupported claims, but the fact is it has not been demonstrated to be unworthy of discussion. Similarly, the, tech, the, the report said the same. The fact is this was a complete and absolute demonstration that those of my detractors who were saying that sense was unscientific were themselves the ones who were being unscientific. The claim was incontrovertibly refuted by the sense challenge. In general, the final claim I want to make is with, rela with relation to this sort of thing. Richard is a basic scientist. He's a biologist. He's not a biomedical researcher. His work is fundamentally curiosity-driven. He understands how to test hypotheses. <laughs> He's very good at it. He is not a goal-directed medical researcher. He's not a technologist. I'm a technologist. I seek to find ways to use the completely acknowledged, incomplete information that we have to try and develop our best bet at developing technologies to manipulate nature. That is not what basic scientists do. That is why people like Lord Kelvin, head of the Royal Society, were still publishing work saying that Maybe powered more. flight was impossible right up until it was done by a couple of bicycle engineers. Technologists and scientists are both needed, so but they are different people. And to say, for a basic scientist to say that technologists don't know what they're talking about is a category error of exactly the sort <laughs> that Richard described. I'll stop there.